Hello, welcome to a new episode of my vlog. Um, I've been going through my record collection year by year and showing you some of my favorite albums uh, from each year. Um, I've actually been doing a rather dorky, I may have mentioned this before, listening project for myself, which is to sort of go through my record collection year by year and listen to some of my favorite music just a little bit more in context, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so yeah, here's some of my favorite albums from 1971, um, and just some stuff that I want to get around to listening to. We're going to start with Janis Joplin's final album, Pearl. Uh, to my knowledge, it was released uh, posthumously uh, with, of course, the Full Tilt Boogie Band. An interesting thing about this Canadian pressing of this album is that it's issued on the Columbia 2i label. Uh, in the United States, Columbia had moved on to their regular circular label. Uh, I don't know what to call it. The that they 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 switched to for the 1970s. Canada hung on to the old style Columbia 2i label for about another year or so. We get the uh, Pearl album looking like that, which is pretty sweet. Uh, this album did not come out in 1971. This is a compilation of uh, Stevie Wonder tracks f dating from 1963 to 1971. And if you look. There are a lot of them. This is a compilation album. It's part of the Motown Anthology series. Motown released an anthology album for each of its most popular artists. Uh, they're all called Anthology, except for the Stevie Wonder one, which is called Looking Back, because they decided to omit uh, Stevie's classic period uh, of mid-'70s music and only cover stuff from, from 62 all the way to 71. But I really like the way this package is laid out with, uh, you know, you got all your liner notes on this page. Awesome triple gatefold picture of Stevie on there as well. I believe it originally came with a booklet as well, but I do not have that. Still look forward to going through that. Um, oh gosh, the classic, The Who, Who's Next. I was going to say this may be their most popular of their studio albums, but they had just so many, like Tommy and Quadrophenia, that it's hard to pick one. This is probably the most popular of their studio albums that was not a rock opera, although it did have its origins in a rock opera called Lifehouse that, um, that Pete Townsend never really finished and said some of the tracks went on to this album, Who's Next? Some of the Who's biggest hits, like Baba O'Reilly, Won't Get Fooled Again, uh, Behind Blue Eyes, and many more on this one. Excellent album. And then, ooh, you got the Electric Light Orchestra. Uh, one of my favorite bands. I love Jeff Lynne's songwriting. But Jeff Lynne was not the only songwriter for this album. You also had Roy Wood. Uh, they had both been in a band called The Move uh, that had dissolved. Or maybe they hadn't. Maybe these two bands overlapped a little. I can't remember. But uh, they put together a band called ELO, the Electric Light Orchestra. And this album was originally supposed to be just self-titled. But apparently, uh, the record label, uh, which would have been United Artists, uh, unless they had a different label in the UK, I forget, um, contacted them and said, hey, we need to know what the title of your album was. and uh, Or they sent someone to call them and ask what the title of their album would be, and he got no answer. So he simply sent back a telegram that said, no answer. Instead of interpreting that to mean that they didn't answer the phone. Uh, the record label was like, oh, all right, we'll call the album. Sorry, I'm trying to get it focused. They said, okay, we'll call the album. No answer. <laughs> Not the intentional name of the album, but I think I've heard that Jeff Lynn said that he actually thought it was hilarious, and he enjoyed that. And as you can see, look, as it's Move Enterprises Limited presents the services of the Electric Light Orchestra, which is pretty funny. Electric Light Orchestra is kind of a pun in that it means both the Orchestra of Electric Lights and also the Electric Light Orchestra. It's a light orchestra. It's also an orchestra of electric light. It's complicated, but, uh, Cool album here. 
uh, with such hits as 10538 Overture. Don't know how to pronounce that. Okay. Elton John, Madman Across the Water. When I saw Elton John live for the first time in 2017, he wore a jacket which had Madman Across the Water album cover. This album cover sequined onto the back of it, which I thought was really cool. This album's not in particularly good shape, but it is one of the old school uh, Universal City Records uh, pressings of it. I like the denim style back cover. Uh, you can't really tell from watching, but this album has a sort of... In the early 70s, albums sometimes had a little bit of a different, more rougher finish, the album jackets, which I think is interesting. I believe there's a gatefold as well. Oh, there's a gatefold and like a little mini little booklet thing, which in my copy is kind of falling apart, but that's cool. Of course, you got big hits like Tiny Dancer and Leave On on this album. I believe Ed Sheeran said this is one of his favorite albums of all time. And for good reason. It is just excellent. All right. Rod Stewart. Um, this is in the time, I believe, when he was in The Faces. This is Every Picture Tells a Story. I believe the other members of The Faces actually do play on this album, but it was issued just under uh, Rod Stewart's name, as you can see there. Um, title track was a big hit, but not as big a hit as Maggie May was. And also an excellent cover of the Temptations classic, I'm Losing You, which is a very cool song. And I just love the art on this. God, the album art is great. Truly excellent there. Paul McCartney, or excuse me, Paul and Linda McCartney with their album Ram. Uh, this is one of those albums that was pretty misunderstood when it first came out and has received a lot more praise in retrospect than it did upon initial release. Uh, too Many People uh, has been pretty favorably remembered. I still hear Uncle Albert slash Admiral Halsey on the radio sometimes. That song's a little bit odd, but people like it. Um, it's not my favorite McCartney solo album, but it's 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 pretty cool too. Um it captures a pretty cool era when Paul was kind of trying to reinvent himself post the breakup of the Beatles. And, of course, I've got it on the original Apple label there. That's cool. And speaking of Beatles-related, I don't have the Imagine album, which is a shame, but at least I have the single. Imagine by the John Lennon and the Plastic Ono Band. You can tell that uh, they used an alternate Apple label for this one. And then the B-side was It's So Hard, I believe, off the same album yeah the, um one of those iconic songs i know a whole bunch of celebrities i haven't seen this video but i've been told that a whole bunch of celebrities just got together and recorded a cover of the song imagine uh for covid19 relief which is pretty cool james brown's first album for polydor records hot pants technically the album is called contains the original hit single hot pants but uh Whatever. This song has a grand total... <laughs> Let's look at that back cover. Do I have to censor this video? Um, this song, act, this album, only has four songs on it, but if you look at the track times, they're very long extended jams. Escapism is even in two parts, but they're great. This album is an excellent... Uh, I don't know. I find this to be a fun album to put on and just like clean my room. I don't know why. It's a good album. It's it's fun. It's it's a lot of fun. Every James Brown album is fun. What am I talking about? Uh, oh, I'm excited for this one. I have both versions um, of Billy Joel's uh, Cold Spring Harbor. Um, this is the uh, this is not the original 1971 pressing. This is a 1973 pressing, but it is one of the old school family productions versions of this, which means it is mastered too fast. I've covered in videos before that Artie Rip and Family Records really messed up the mastering of this album and actually issued it too fast. In 1983, the label Billy had been on for the last 12 years, uh, Columbia Records reissued it uh, with the... Uh, with the with the pitch and speed of the recordings corrected. And the only other difference is, if you'll notice, the album cover for this reissue is slightly zoomed in from the picture that's on the original. So that's pretty cool. I can't... I, 
a part of me wants to listen to the corrected version so I can hear the songs the way they were originally intended. But it'll be cool to actually check out the, uh, you know, glitched pressing. That'll be interesting. Um, Frank Zappa, I have never really gotten into, but I'm going to give this album a spin because I picked it up for dirt cheap in a bargain bin. It's Frank Zappa and the Mothers at the Fillmore East in June of 1971. I'll definitely check that one out. Uh, don't forget to register to vote down there. Uh, I love the, uh, what appears to be hand-drawn, uh, cover art on this one. Not even drawn, just written. Um, that's pretty cool. Cat Stevens with Teaser and the Fire Cat. Uh, classic, classic album with a lot of his biggest hits on it. Songs like uh, Morning Has Broken and, of course, the super hit Peace Train. You get a cover of him there. Or a, a cover of him, a picture of him on the gatefold. Very cool. Uh, oh, and, of course, Moonshadow, one of his biggest hits ever. Fun fact. Moonshadow was probably my first favorite song when I was about four years old. My parents used to play the heck out of Cat Stevens music when I was very young. And when I was going into kindergarten, uh, this is according to my mom, the, the kindergarten teacher asked what kind of music I like. And I guess most kids say like the Wiggles or something. And I was like, Cat Stevens? I guess I haven't changed all that much. Melanie Safka. I was supposed to see Melanie live. Uh, or I was thinking of buying tickets for her live couple of weeks ago, right when the COVID thing necessitated the cancellation of everything. And so this is the first concert that I was unable to go to due to COVID, unfortunately. She is awesome. Uh, this is the album Gather Me, which has one of her most enduring radio hits, Brand New Key. Great gatefold image there. Love it. And just this gives off so much of a like early seventies singer songwriter y <laughs> vibe to it, so that's neat. And then of course, gonna finish this one off. You couldn't do a retrospective of the best albums of nineteen seventy one without talking about Led Zeppelin four. Um, this is not an original pressing. This is one of the newer reissues. Uh, it's a t two album set, so. Album number one of this set is the original album. Check out this awesome three-panel gatefold, though. Yeah, so the first album is the original album. And then the second album in here is... Oh, see here, this shows you. The first album, original album. Then there's the companion disc, which has mostly the same songs that are on the album, but these feature, instead of the finished tracks there's some demos on here there's some alternate mixes on here and some cool stuff for the diehard led zeppelin fan so uh going to listen to that got some great stuff to listen to to cover 1971 can't wait to dig in thank you so much for watching uh check out my description for uh, a list of where you can find my music where it's sold or streamed online. I am a professional musician. Like this video if you like what you saw. Subscribe to this channel if you've been enjoying my videos. And you can ring the notification bell if you'd like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, which should be tomorrow and most days for the foreseeable future. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Catch you again with another new vlog soon.